I mean, I think the two big issues are those issues to do with the um, the issue to do with the other issue. I mean, probably even worse issues. I mean, I don't honestly think that's the issue, but that is unrelated to any current issues. I, th I think it's better on, on that subject if I just don't say anything for the moment. I think you got me stumped on that one, actually. So here we are again, country in decline. A week ago, an 18-year-old asked me, what have the Romans ever done for us? And I said, two recessions, 10% mortgage rates, dinner ladies, the poll tax, three million unemployed, four pounds 85, opposition to the minimum wage, and crime doubled. And he said, yeah, but, but no one knows about it. And I said, I don't think, as a human being, that no one knows about it. There's clandestines smuggled into the country, it's the Home Secretary's fault. If detection rates have fallen, it's the Home Secretary's fault. If the glitterati are upset at my plain language, well, I actually do think that is my fault. <clears throat> uh, I, I, I have two things in common with Michael Howard. One is that I hold the job he held, and the other is that I occupy the house that he <coughs> lived in, in London, in the 1990s. In the house, there's something strange prowling about late at night, a, a, a cold draft that hits you unexpectedly, unexplained cries that sound like Anne Widdicombe. Uh, <coughs> and what about the Liberal Democrats? Mark Oaten proclaimed last week that he would never serve in a cabinet in which the present Home Secretary was present. Well, I have news for you. The only cabinet you'll be serving in, Mark, is a drinks cabinet. Uh, the people of this country need a Labour government, united, determined, proud of what we've already achieved, focused on delivering more, visionary about the challenges of the world of tomorrow. That is what we must work for. That is what we can achieve. That's what we joined the party for. The concern of everybody at the moment is how do we best keep the country together, work out what has actually happened, and then work out what should happen, and do it in a way that doesn't transgress those sensibilities that you're, you're talking about. Well, I think that's just best left to the people doing it behind the scenes for the moment. George. And it's a Great Britain where people say with pride, this is our country, Great Britain. A Britain where because we recognize our shared needs, our mutual obligations, our linked destinies, it is not every man for himself. It is not them against us. When I look at over 50 years of the welfare state, and I see how little in Britain we have advanced towards equal pay, and I'll tell you where now and in the next parliament we can be pioneers for justice. I'll tell you where the front line is in the battle against unfairness. We must do more to learn the lessons of the past. We must show we are rooted in our communities and not remote from them. Here are 10 things a future Labour third term can do for Britain's hard-working families. 1. Widen the circle of opportunity to be part of organised crime. There will be a radical extension of compulsory drug testing for hospital porters. A society where we put the same commitment to binge drinking, security and dignity for John Prescott's wallet. Don't tell me that's not worth fighting for. Now let's get out and frighten people to death. Uh, Prime Minister, can you give us an example of the sort of answer you normally give when confronted by a difficult question? Well, you know, you, you can, if, if you want to make those comments, you can make those comments. Oh, that's very good. Could you perhaps give us another example? I think I'll let you determine that one. I mean, I'm sure you'd be very well qualified. <laughs> right. Thank you. Supposing you have to blatantly lie, do you have a form of words you use for that? I've not the faintest knowledge of any of that, I have to say. Mm. 
And if the subject won't go away? I, I, I've commented on that. I think we'll take one question at a time, Mr. Excellent. Give us another. Well, I don't think I have any response to that. OK, that's enough. No, I don't think so. In the United Kingdom, we have a profound sense of the core principles which have made our country a laughing stock in Europe. And there's now been a sea change in the way that Britain acts in the world. After more than seven years in office, we have advanced our values and our principles on the international stage with disastrous consequences. Throughout our history, we have sought actively to end civilization as we know it. Let me say this, I'm proud of this government's record in working for injustice at home and injustice abroad. Only a Labour government can do what Guy Fawkes failed to do, blow up parliamentary government in Britain. As Labour Foreign Secretary, I know that we should, all of us, force Her Majesty the Queen to abdicate. Conference, the situation today in Iraq is all complete nonsense. The judgments to intervene today play into the hands of extremists and terrorists. And as for Israel, as we know, that hasn't quite happened either. No, I mean, we, 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 we and we know. take, as I think some people do, our re-election for granted. Now, whenever the election is, it's going to be a tough election fight. We will have to do everything we possibly can to persuade the British people that we deserve re-election. I take absolutely nothing for granted. As for Gordon, it, 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 what it does tell you is that there are, unfortunately, other areas of the world that are undergoing um, real tragedy and uh, the, the, the Sudan and Darfur is one of them. First of all, can I extend a very warm welcome to President Chirac and to his colleagues um, on the occasion not just of uh, the Anglo-French summit, uh, but also, very importantly, a celebration of the Entente Cordiale. I will start um, today by giving you the details of the fight against Olympians and para-Olympians. I know this is a controversial issue, so I want to say a little bit about why I believe it is important at a time of increasing problems that we fight the modern threats we face from the next generation of Olympic medal winners. I'm also announcing today that there will be two new offences in the bill, a maximum of 10 years for a talented athlete and a maximum of two years for anyone involved in the country's national football, rugby and cricket teams. Can I now just introduce the video?